For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today is January 4, 2021 and the UK court has decided that Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, will not be extradited to the United States. Now, this is uh, quite a significant verdict because over the past many months, there have been, there's been a hearing, there's been a lot of arguments and there was, there was a lot of doubt whether this verdict would come out or whether the extradition would actually proceed. So to talk more about this, we have with us Renata Avila, who's one of the advice, legal advisors to Julian Assange. Thank you so much, Renata, for speaking to us. Uh, thank you for having me here. It's amazing to be on this side of the screen. I'm always on that side of the screen, <laughs> watching all the, all the amazing things that you are reporting all the time, all, all over the world about social justice issues. Thank you so well, much. Well, yeah, it is an exciting day in a sense. I mean, it is the first positive uh, resolution from a UK court in 10 years for Julian. But also, you know, it's a big reflection that makes me angry, you know, like, uh, because it has been 10 years of this fight, 10 years of a life of somebody who should be like, you know, battling the bad guys out and working in news outlets like this one and, and revolution in journalism as he was doing. So it has been 10 years of an interrupted life and not only interrupted life, but of an interrupted purpose and mission that he had in life. And that was the whole objective, right? Punishment by process. Absolutely. So today, uh, something important for the people watching to understand is not a final decision. Mm -hmm. This decision could and will be appealed by the Department of Justice of the US, even if they know that they are going to lose more, most likely. And the second important clarification that is very important for people to bear in mind, the, we are not disputing the facts here. We are not defending yet uh, the right to publish here. The only question that was uh, in the hands of the UK is whether a person charged by the crimes that he has been charged, which is basically to publish and to protect journalist sources, uh, should be extradited to the US or should be protected because of political reasons. And um, the, all the arguments submitted by the defense explaining to the court that what he's doing him is the best form of journalism, that what he's doing is in the public interest, that he didn't harm anybody, that it was all done legally. All of this today was dismissed. So even if I'm happy because, you know, like the, the, the answer was a no to extradition, it's bad news for journalism. Exactly. Why is it bad, bad news? Because um, the only reason that, uh, that, uh, that the, the court took and the only reason why the extradition has been denied is because he's in a really bad shape and he's at suicide risk. And, and the conditions of prisons, as we all know, in the U.S. do not meet the standards that will not guarantee that he's not, he will not kill himself. So it is a very sad, in a way, judgment. I mean, it was just a humanitarian reason to keep him alive and save his life, basically. But we lost somehow. We lost all the journalistic arguments. And that only consolidates this news imperialism that the U.S. wants for all of us. Why? Because the publications were not published from the U.S., right. were not published by a U.S. citizen. It was completely outside U.S. publications about matters that matter to the rest of the world. And that's what is being persecuted and prosecuted here. So um, in a way, uh, it is a good day for human rights, a bad day for journalism somehow. Because what will happen, what will happen is that if uh, you are under the same circumstances, uh, you will be punished. Absolutely. If you are on this exact same circumstances, you will be affected. Absolutely, right. And in this context, I think the immediate question is of uh, the appeal itself, which the United States is definitely likely to file in this uh, process. So based on today's ruling, uh, what kind of a chance does the appeal process itself have? Because the judge has 
like you said, given a very, in some senses, a divided ruling where she's basically accepted all the arguments that the prosecution has put forward, but then uh, made the point about uh, Julian's life being at risk of, of suicide because of the prison conditions. So in terms of the appeal process, what exactly are pos the possibilities? Well, uh, Julian is in solid, on solid ground because uh, the ruling of the uh, minor court it is consistent with recent rulings of a higher courts in the Lori Love case. Mm -hmm. And that means that uh, he is, uh, uh, he's more likely to, th th that argument is 99% probabilities to, to prevail. Uh, but now we have a complication because we don't know if he will be granted bail. Right. We think that is the only just thing. I mean, he has been like a, in these conditions for so long. There's COVID pandemic. Uh, we really hope that um, consistent to the uh, decision that the judge uh, let him uh, be under house arrest uh, or even just domiciliary arrest uh, uh, during this time, you know, like if, he, if he's able to circulate, to go to universities, give talks, like activate his life back, get his life back. Even these minimum things, going to the beach and playing with his children in the park, these minimum things that he, he could enjoy again. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. We will know uh, a UK time uh, in the morning on Wednesday, Wednesday the 6th. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And in this context, like you pointed out, I think there's a huge challenge for journalism itself in the coming months and years because what was what was and has and is celebrated as a very legitimate form of journalism has basically been criminalized in this uh, verdict for lack of better words because whether it be protecting sources whether it be like you said talking about uh, news from around the world which uh, countries affecting around the world all that has been just bundled into criminal activity under the name of hacking as well yeah exactly and it is it is uh, it is so treacherous because it is like the same gatekeepers want to keep the privilege to publish and be the only ones doing it. And um, basically, independent media is a threat to this model. And social media uh, has only contributed to the concentration of power of the powerful actors and projects like WikiLeaks not relying on advertising or algorithms or um, data mining from the people reading them at really challenging the, the business model, really ch challenging hierarchies. You cannot buy journalism because people are supporting this kind of journalism. And it's not substack, you know, and it's not these closed uh, compartments for those who can only, who, who, those who can pay. It is something openly supported by the people all over the world. So I, I can only hope, I can only hope that uh, WikiLeaks survives and reinvents itself and challenges power as it has done it in the resistance side uh, for 10 years. Thank you so much Rinal, for speaking to us. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch. <laughs>